Hello everyone, in this lecture we're going to be talking about the O's and analysis of the alkenes, where alkenes can be broken into aldehydes and ketones in the presence of an ozone and a mild reducing agent. So if I want to go ahead and write down a general reaction, so suppose I got uh, this alkene here, and this alkene can be broken into two different compounds using an O3. So that's going to be your first step. And your second step is the use of mild reducing agent. And uh, a typical mild reducing agent would be the DMS that you could see, or you may also see the zinc and water being used in there. So any one of those are fine. And uh, one of the easiest way to do this reaction is just kind of uh, break this up uh, break this apart into where the double bond is. So kind of break it right there and then redraw your both sides separate. So I'll go ahead and redraw both of these sides separate like this. We still have the double bond on there, but the double bond is not going to be with the carbon anymore, but you're going to have this new oxygen installed there that's coming from ozone. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So that was actually from the left side and you're on the right side you got only one carbon there so one carbon and obviously it's got two hydrogens on it and then i'm going to go ahead and still make the double bond onto that one carbon that's left there and it's going to be making a um, aldehyde there so both of those reactions are making the aldehyde all right, so let's look at some of these examples here. You don't really have to know the mechanism on this particular, on these particular reactions. It's unlikely you'll be asked to do the mechanism. So if I look at this particular alkene here, all I really got to do is be able to identify where I'm going to uh, break this apart and how the product's going to look like. So suppose I'm using ozone and uh, uh, water and zinc in the second step to as an amyl reducing agent. So what we need to do there, we need to break this up right here and then see what's left out on both sides. So when we make this, obviously draw both of those sides as they appear and then put the oxygens there. So that's going to be one of them. And then your other one obviously is going to look like this. So keep track of your oxygens there. So this right there is going to be that side and obviously the other left side had three oxygens at uh, three carbons and that's what we have on this side here this question gets a little bit complicated or a little bit confusing when you have these rings being involved and you're doing the same type of reaction um, so sometimes it's a good idea to kind of keep track of your carbons by numbering those I suppose i'm still using o3 with uh, zinc water. Now in this case, um, the, there is a double bond, but it's in the ring. So even when you open that double bond up, um, it's still going to be one molecule. So I suppose I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and break this apart right here. So when I break this apart right there, it's it's a good idea to kind of number those. So let's go ahead and number one, two, three, four, five. And I didn't really number those based on the IUPAC uh, rule. I just number those for my own convenience so that I can see what's really happening. So if I want to just draw how it actually appears for a moment early, um, this is how it's going to look like. So we got uh, that, that. So one, two three, four, and five. So you're going to have a double bond with the oxygen made on the first one, and you're going to have this double bond oxygen made for the, first one, for the fifth one. So then what I need to do now, I, I, it's, not, it's unlikely you will see something like that in the exam, but rather it's going to be in, in the form of an open chain. So I need to go ahead and make a five-member uh, chain there. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So remember, on the first carbon, you're going to have another methyl group here, and then you got this uh, ketone there. So you're, you got a ketone function group there. And then on the fifth one, you're going to have this aldehyde function group there. So that's how it's going to look like. All right. What if you have multiple double bonds, and that's 
going to be the case sometimes. As long as it's not aromatic, you should be able to break up the multiple double bonds as well. So this one actually have multiple products being paid. If I can break it up right here, that's one uh, place you can break it up. And then you can also break it up right there. So then you got to worry about, okay, what's really going to be happening to all my uh, carbons there. So if I number these for my own convenience, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I can clearly see that the one and two is going to break up. So when the one and two breaks up, uh, your one is going to look like this. So it's just going to be making it a formaldehyde. So I'm just going to go write that down one there. Okay, so then other products you can have your two, three, four, five, and six, they're going to be together. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So this is going to be three, four. So suppose this was two, three, four, five, and you're still going to have a six there. So remember at the two, you're going to have an um, aldehyde made here. At the four is a four where you break another dull bond. You're going to have a ketone now because it's going to be uh, two carbons on both sides. And at the six, it's going to be making another aldehyde group. So that's something you got to be careful with. And then your other product is going to be the seven, eight, nine, obviously. So your seven, eight, nine are going to be right here. So let's call that seven, eight, and nine. So on the seven, you're going to have this keto, uh, aldehyde group and the same story with the nine. You're going to have this aldehyde group right there. So you're going to be making actually three products here when you break this apart. So this is something very commonly seen in a little bit complicated ozonolysis reaction where you're actually going to be making breaking the compound at multiple places and as a result will be making multiple products. All right, so these are uh, the most common ozonolysis reactions you're going to be seeing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.